Pat, the, the stock is down more than 10%. What is it that the market is not understanding here for Intel? Well, thanks, Ed, and always a pleasure to be with you and Carolyn on the show. You know, first, we finished a great year. We had Q4, uh, beat on top and bottom line, finishing a year that was comfortably ahead, you know, and showing the transformation uh, journey that we're on. And we believe we're putting points on the board for a long-term transformation of this iconic uh, company. In light of that, hey, the Q1, you know, at the low end of seasonal. So we think the market reaction is a bit overstated in that respect. We understand it, but our company, our employees are doing an incredible job at delivering our process technology, restoring product uh, leadership, defining new categories like the AIPC. We're on a multi-year journey and we're not gonna be judged on a 90-day shot clock. We are out to rebuild this company and we had a great 23 and I'm confident in a great 24 for this company. Pat, there were, there were so many questions on the call about your foundry business. And for our global audience, that's the co sort of contract manufacturing business where you make chips for others. And, and, and I'm, you seem to say that you didn't get an, as many committed dollars as you thought you might. And I wonder what's standing in the way of that, customers committing oh. to backing your foundry business. Yeah, and we're very comfortable with the progress. You know, we said that we'd have one on our leading edge node 18A, as it's called, and we delivered four for the year. We also found that there was a lot of momentum in our uh, packaging uh, business where we now have five major customers on our advanced packaging uh, technology. And we said, hey, <laughs> we went from 4 billion to over 10 billion of lifetime deal value. So good momentum, but most importantly, is the process technology itself. Are we back to a leadership technology? And we're hitting all the milestones, this audacious five nodes and four year plan, and all of the milestones are on track to have us back to process leadership in 25. And as I say, a foundry company, they wanna know that if they design on us, they can build the best products and we're gaining momentum in uh, delivering on exactly that promise. And so proud of my teams for delivering on such an audacious plan. We're on track. What about track for AI accelerators? Not just AI on the PC, but I, I put it bluntly, Pat, NVIDIA's run away with this. When or can you regain any sort of leadership in that space? Yeah, and clearly that's been an area of strength for them. We appreciate that they've, as I say, focused on that for many years and uh, the market has come their way in a strong way. But our roadmap is gaining momentum. Gaudi too, we said we're seeing a significant expansion in the customer pipeline uh, that we have. We're ramping up supply. So I'll say we're chasing to have enough supply you know, to meet market and we're well underway on our next generation, Gaudi 3, uh, as it's called, with 4X the compute, 2X the network, in the lab, gaining uh, you know really really good uh, early debug in uh, bringing that product to market later this year. So we feel like, hey, you know, yes, you know, we have a lot of work to do here, but the momentum is building. The market is looking for alternatives, and our roadmap is strengthening as we go through the year. But more importantly, Carolyn, is this idea that last year was the year of high-end training. This year, it's about how do I use those models? And that's much more about the enterprise strength where Intel is at the edge, in the PC, and in the enterprise data center. So we see the market coming our way in AI in 24 and 25. And let's go to that core segment. Let's go to data centers because you have promised that you are not losing market share there. How do you show that evidence of that, Pat? In Q4, our estimates are we are about flat in uh, market share in Q4. So clearly we lost share, weakness of products, but that's now being overcome. We are executing on our product roadmap and we're ahead of schedule on the products for 24. We're seeing great momentum for the 2024 product line, good execution. And I'm very happy to say we sent our first 2025 product on 18A already into fab ahead of schedule. So our execution momentum is building. We see that we've stabilized our market share and now it's time for us to rebuild where we were before and we have the products and the strength to go do it. Really proud of our team's progress here. For our Bloomberg television and radio audience worldwide, we're speaking with the Intel CEO, Pat Gelsinger. And, and Pat, when I've been down to Santa Clara and, and sort of seen the reality of Intel, it, it always strikes me as being more multifaceted than say NVIDIA, right, on its, its high-end performance GPU. 
a part of that is the packaging, a part of that is your differentiation with Foundry. But I go back to Caroline's point on the, on the core business. What seems to be happening in the context of data center is CPU. And I just wondered if you'd explain to our audience what you think is happening in that market, specifically on the CPU side. Yeah, and then the CPU uh, last year was clearly a year there was more energy on the GPU, right, for these high-end training systems. But as we come into this year, we think there's going to be more balance between the CPU and the accelerator marketplace. Clearly, we're going to be participating more in the accelerator, but the strength of Intel has been our Xeon, the core data center CPU. And, you know, coming out of uh, World Economic Forum and Davos and CES, I probably met with 50 customers, and the enthusiasm that they have and the traditional strength that Intel has in the enterprise. And, you know, we're in year 20 of the cloud, uh, Ed, and 60% yes. of computing is in the cloud, but 80% of the data remains on-prem in the enterprise data center. That's where Intel is uniquely strong, and our CPUs and accelerators are going to unlock that capability for our customers. This is an exciting time for us to really enable them to use those models, and that's a strength for Intel and our CPUs. Pat, when I look at the cloud and the hyperscalers themselves, the, the really interesting story is their in-house design work and their in-house silicon progress. Do you consider that a factor in how your own business in, in the data center and cloud side performed and how you think it will perform going forward? Yeah, and one of the things that I said, Ed, is Intel has the opportunity of 100% of the AI market for it because we're going to have our product offerings. Xeon is strong, showing up with a greater improvement in our accelerator product line. But we're also going to be a foundry. And all of those internal programs that you see at Amazon and at Google and at Microsoft, hey, I want to be the foundry for those. Mm -hmm. And all of the competitors' products, I want to be the foundry for them, as well as we're seeing the momentum of our packaging technology. So when you think about it that way, Intel uniquely is the company that has the opportunity to participate in 100% of the AI market with our products and our foundry. And that's exactly what we're intent upon doing. Has any of the weakness in demand thus far been because of this in-house design and build commitment from some of these companies? Or have you already managed to sort of seal verbal approval that you'll be doing these for them from a foundry business? You know, uh, at this point, I'd say it's pretty early. I don't think it's really affected the market that much, uh, Carolyn, so far. But I do think this forward-looking view is a unique one for Intel, that we do get to participate in both sides of that uh, market. There's a lot of energy here, as uh, the cloud vendors are saying, how do I have a more cost-effective solution for these large training and inferencing demands of generative AI? And for that, every one of them, has these projects underway and we're engaging with all of them as we speak. So I really see that as a long-term opportunity. It takes multiple years for those to materialize, but our technologies, as they gain momentum, are showing up at just the right time to satisfy a unique AI market for those cloud vendors. And we've just been hearing how you know, within this change that we see around AI, so comes a change in talent in many of these companies. Are you in any way having to reorientate your own workers, your own colleagues, Pat? Are you having to let go of people? Well, every day it's focused on talent. And in the technology industry, Carolyn, you know, talent, right, as uh, one, one of our CFOs used to say, he said, we start with sand, right, the second most plentiful material on earth, and everything else is talent between then and delivering our products and technology. So this idea of talent is so critical to our markets. Now, Intel has a well-tenured and very capable uh, base in both software and in hardware, but we're reorienting them very fast to the AI requirements, to data skills, to software skills, but we build on a very firm foundation, and we're making good moves to bring additional talent uh, into the company as well to continue to have the best people to do the best products to enable the best customer experience that they could possibly have. And a great example of that is the AIPC, where we're unquestionably defining the category, have a strong roadmap, and delivering on it at scale with ISVs and our uh, OEMs in the marketplace today. 
Pat, before we let you go, you, you mentioned 18A. You in the past have been kind and explained to me what it takes to jump generation to generation on the manufacturing side and, and kind of the process to retain and regain uh, technology leadership. So in the, the time, small time we have left, what evidence do you have that that beautiful chart you drew for me on the whiteboard is playing out the way that you expected to? Well, we delivered the design collateral. It's called a PDK in Q4 of last year. We've seen our customers expand uh, against that. And most importantly, we sent our first major product into the fab just before uh, earnings call started ahead of schedule. And if you can take a big processor design like a server chip and send it with stable design rules into manufacturing, you know, that's a pretty definitive statement of momentum. And we're adding customers and uh, we have 75 test chips in the plan uh, right now. So lots of customers are saying, hmm, let me try my design. And importantly, we have our Foundry Day, you know, this opening of the doors of Intel Foundry coming up in February. So a moment for the ecosystem, the EDA partners, the IP providers, and our customers to show up and see the progress that we're making. And for the first time, we'll talk about what comes after 18A. You know, we're not finished. You know, the Moore's Law, we are the stewards. Until the periodic table is exhausted, we ain't finished. And we're confident we're the company that's going to keep innovating and in process technology for decades to come.